You've seen the basic solar tutorials, but what happens when you need to build a system that's not just powerful, but also safe? Today, we're not cutting any corners. We're building a complete 8 kilowatt hybrid solar system. And we're going to dive deep into the details that most tutorials uh, skip, like the crucial calculations for component sizing, and most importantly, the vital grounding system for both the DC and AC sides. This is the difference between a working system and a safe, professional one. We'll be using a Di 8 kW hybrid inverter, Canadian solar panels, and a massive battery bank. Get ready to build your system like a pro. Let's get started. Part 1. The Blueprint, System Overview and Design Philosophy Our system's design philosophy is simple. Efficiency and safety. We're building a system with three main power flows, from the panels, to the batteries, and to the grid. The Di 8 kW hybrid inverter is the heart of it all. It's the brain that intelligently manages all these flows. Here's a detailed look at our system components and how they fit together. PV Array 14X Canadian 580 Watt Panels The Inverter Di 8 kW Hybrid Inverter Energy Storage A 15.36 kW Lithium Ion Phosphate Battery Bank 3 times 5.12 kW Units the DC Safety Hub, our DC combiner box, complete with string fuses, MCBs, a main DC isolator, and a DC surge protection device, SPD. The AC Safety Hub, our AC distribution board, ACDB, with AC breakers for the grid and the home load, an under over voltage and current protection relay, and an AC SPD. The foundation of safety, the grounding system, this is the network of wires that protects your system and home from electrical faults and lightning strikes. We'll dedicate a significant part of this video to this because it's non-negotiable. Part 2. Deep dive into component selection and calculations. A. Solar panels. PV array. Panel specs. Canadian solar 580 watts. VOC equals 42 volts. ISC equals 18.5 amps. VMP equals 34 volts. PV sizing. We calculated 14 panels for an 8.12 kilowatt array, perfectly matched to our 8 kilowatt inverter. B. Dysecius kilowatt hybrid inverter. The string sizing. Model. Dyson 8 KSG01 LP1. MPPT configuration. This inverter has two independent MPPT inputs. This is a huge advantage as it allows us to optimize power generation even if one part of our array is shaded. String sizing, the math, voltage. We'll create two strings of seven panels each. The string voltage will be seven times VMP equals seven times 34. V equals 238 V. This value is perfect sitting right in the sweet spot of our inverter's MPPT voltage range 125 to 425 volts, which means it will operate at peak efficiency. Open circuit voltage check. Always check the max open circuit voltage VOC in cold weather. A panel's voltage increases as the temperature drops. Let's assume a cold weather factor of 1.15. The max VOC for a string would be 7 times. 42V times 1.15 equals 338.1V. This is well below our inverter's 500 volts max DC input, so our system is safe from overvoltage. Current check. The inverter's max input current is 18 amps per MPPT. Our panel's ISC is 18.5 amps. While this is slightly over, the actual operating current IMP is 17.28 amps, which is within the limit. We'll use 20 amp fuses MCBs to handle the initial surge and protect the cables. Always use caution with this and consult the inverter's manual for specific safety factors. CDC combiner box and component selection asterisk, CBS slash fuses. For each string, we need a protection device. We'll use 25A DC MCBs or fuses rated for a DC voltage of at least 500 volts. This is based on our ISC of 18.5 amps multiplied by a 1.25 safety factor, giving us a value of 23.125 amps. The next standard size up is 25 amps. DC isolator, a single handle rotary switch that disconnects the entire both PV array. It must be rated for at least 500 volts and a current of over 40 amps. DC SPD, Choose a type 2 or type 1 slash 2 SPD rated for our maximum system voltage of 500 volts. 
The SPD has three terminals, positive, negative and a ground terminal. We'll connect this ground terminal to our main DC ground bus bar. DAC distribution board, ACDB and protection relays. Grid breaker, the DI 8 kilowatt inverter can put out around 35 amps of AC current. We'll use a 50 amp AC MCB to protect the grid connection. This is your inverter's gateway to the grid, AC SPD. Just like its DC counterpart, this SPD connects the L1, L2 if applicable and neutral lines to the ground buzz bar inside the ACDB. It's your last line of defense against grid side surges. Load breaker. For the home loads, we'll use a 40 amp AC MCB. Under over voltage and current protection relay. This isn't just a simple breaker, it's a smart device. We'll set the voltage limits, e.g. 200 volts to 250 volts and a current limit. If the grid's voltage goes outside this range, the relay trips instantly, protecting your inverter from damage. E-battery bank and DC protection. Battery specs, 3 times 5.12 kilowatt hours, 48 volt batteries. DC breaker for battery. The dye inverter can handle a substantial current from the batteries. Let's use a robust 200 amp DC MCB, rated for 48 volts. This breaker is placed directly after the battery bank and before the inverter. In an emergency, this is your primary disconnect for the batteries. Part 3. The Connections Step-by-step -step Wiring PV Strings Connect the positive and negative MC4 connectors from your first string to the first input of the DC combiner box. Repeat for the second string. DCDB to inverter Connect the output of the DC isolator to the PV input terminals on the die inverter. Battery Connection Connect the positive and negative terminals of your battery bank to the 200D amp DC MCB. Then, run the wires from the breaker to the inverter's battery terminals. Connect the BMS communication cable to the inverter's BMS port. Grid connection. Run the grid's live, neutral and earth wires to the ACDB. Connect the live and neutral through the voltage protection relay and the 50A breaker. And finally, to the D inverter's grid terminals. Connect the earth wire to the ACDB's grounding bus bar. Load connection. Run the live, neutral and earth wires from your home's main load panel to the ACDB. Connect them through the 40 amp breaker and to the die inverter's load output terminals. The grounding wires. Go back and ensure every single grounding wire is connected as we described. This is your final safety check. Part 4. The critical safety system. Grounding. Now let's talk about the most important and often overlooked part of the installation, the grounding system. A proper grounding system provides a safe path for fault currents to flow to the earth, preventing electric shock and protecting your equipment from lightning. We have two separate grounding systems, DC and AC. DC side grounding, the goal to ground the metal frames of the solar panels and the inverter chassis to protect against faults. PV array. First, each solar panel has a grounding point, usually a small hole with a ground symbol. We will use a dedicated green or green-yellow grounding wire to connect each panel frame to the next. This creates a chain of grounding. DC combiner box. This grounding chain then terminates at a dedicated grounding bus bar inside our DC combiner box. This bus bar is where the DC SPD's ground wire also connects. Inverter chassis. The die inverter has a specific grounding terminal. We'll run another grounding wire from the DC grounding bus bar to the inverter's chassis grounding point, the main DC grounding rod. Finally, the DC grounding bus bar is connected to its own dedicated grounding rod driven deep into the earth. This rod ensures that any fault current from the DC side is safely dissipated into the ground, a seaside grounding. The goal to ground the AC distribution board, the inverter's chassis, and the home's main electrical system, ACDB. Our AC distribution board has a dedicated grounding bus bar. This is where all the grounding wires from the AC circuits will terminate. The AC SPD's ground terminal also connects here. Inverter chassis. The die inverter's chassis must be grounded to both the DC and AC grounding systems. We've already connected it to the DC bus bar. Now we'll also run a grounding wire from its chassis to the grounding bus bar in the ACDB. Main AC grounding rod. This AC grounding bus bar is connected to the home's main grounding rod or electrode. Crucially, the AC and DC grounding rods should be bonded together with a thick copper wire to create a single, unified grounding system for the entire installation. 
This prevents potential differences between the two grounding points, which could be dangerous. Part 5. Commissioning and Final Words With all the wiring complete and checked, it's time to power up. Remember the sequence. Turn on the battery breaker. Turn on the DC isolator for the solar panels. Power on the inverter. Wait for it to boot up. Finally, turn on the AC breakers for the grid and the load. Congratulations! You've just built a professional-grade, safe and powerful 8kW hybrid solar system. You've not only learned how to assemble the components, but also understood the critical importance of a proper grounding system. This is the knowledge that will give you peace of mind and ensure your system lasts for decades. And there you have it, a complete 8kW hybrid solar power system. Built from the ground up, you've gone from a beginner to a pro, understanding not just the components, but the critical safety measures like grounding that make all the difference. This system will not only save you money on electricity bills, but also give you the freedom and peace of mind of energy independence. If you found this guide helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more DIY energy projects. If you have any questions or want to share your own solar build, leave a comment down below. We are building a community of solar enthusiasts and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.